All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, gonna give you an update here on the Skeeter for this year, uh, 2022. Made some winter time changes. Uh, fill you in on here what I've done. I have added the Garmin LiveScope and I added a Mega 360 unit. I am gonna run an auxiliary battery for the Garmin and for the 360. Um, the black box on the Garmin draws about a half an amp, according to the website, 360 about a half an amp and a little over two for the Garmin 106 SV. So I got this set up on a lithium battery sitting down in here in the rod locker. Uh, I'll show you what I've done. Got a storage unit, storage box from Cabela's. Mounted the lithium battery inside of it so it's protected in there. Uh, I do have a tie down strap on it running through here. These wires here go to a quick connect on the upper side that goes up and main powers the switches up there. Got also got a quick connect back here on the back. Then I run back to the console so I can have one plug, uh, one extension cord to charge both the onboard charger and the lithium battery. I'm plugging both in here on the side of the boat, running underneath the cover and have stuff protected for the winter. So I took this box added the strap to it, added a quick connect on the front. Added this quick connect up here. Uh, did put a nylon strap on it so I can strap it down through the center. Quick connect up here on the front. Uh, plugs right into the front of the box. Everything will be weather tight, protected. Run the wires up through the front, up through a grommet, mounted the black box up there in the front of the rod storage. On the front side of the boat, I am going to be running Hummingbird Helix 12 Mega Down Imaging and the Garmin 106 SV for the live scope. Live scope is going to be mounted on a live scanner pole. Uh, it is adjustable height up and down. It will turn. This mount here was a Facebook Marketplace find. It's a 3D printed mount. It will rotate up into the perspective mode. Um, I do want to make up some sort of a throttle cable, some sort of a cable aftermarket so I can leave it in the water and change back and forth from perspective to the down mode. 360 imaging. I mounted it on a Fortrex mount with a low pro Altrex adapter. So I can also rotate this in or out uh, to fit the cover to look for the best imaging. I can move it around and get it out of the way if I need to or change it. Um, once I get it all set up, get this thing on the water. I'll make a final adjustments to it and probably shorten up that shaft some. <laughs> Same way with this mount here. Uh, once things are set up, I may have to shorten that shaft up a little bit. Mounted the Mega Down Imaging transducer for the Helix on the trolling motor. Do have the the UST, US2 sonar that's built into the Altrax. I have it adapted up to run the Garmin 2D. So switch wise, the Helix is going to be connected to the main batteries. The Garmin, the LiveScope transducer and black box, and the 360 are going to run off the lithium. So I run those up to a switch panel I got off of Amazon. These were all hooked together as individual switches. So I done some rewiring on the back of it and I made this one a main power switch it does have a voltmeter here so i can watch it all day it's got a weather tight two usb ports here if needed uh, i've got a power switch for the mega 360 a power switch for the garmin unit and a power switch for the black box so they all are isolated um, i can shut them off turn them back on as i need 
The Live Scanner. This is the 599 model, their cheapest model they have. I did add the Altrex swing mount, which makes it really nice uh, rotating it in or out and get it out of the way of the units, get it out of the way of the cover and away from the 360. 599 for this unit. It shows on their website that it's got a module box attached to the wiring. Uh, this unit does not. It is very simple. Uh, power and control wires run out of the head unit down and I run them underneath here and they've got a Y in them uh, off of where the power goes in, in the fuse port and then it Y's up to the foot pedals. It's a nice quiet unit. It's smooth. Uh, got no complaints at all about it. A uh, nice heavy duty foot pedal. It does have non-slip grips on the back. So it it grips pretty good. Um, but I am going to get some sort of a rod strap and, and put a strap on that for when I'm traveling on, on the water. Uh, it gets rough. That thing's going to bounce around. I left plenty of cable out here as I'm using it. I can move it around to whatever's comfortable, get it out of my way if I need to be. So that's pretty much going to be the setup for this year. The, the Helix, I've noticed that it does like to have the 360 powered up before the Helix unit's turned on. Um, well, I guess it does. Recognizes out of the water. So I've got to get these things on the water and get stuff set up for this year. Uh, Ohio right now, we're calling for a big ice storm tonight. We've got ice on the water, 10 inches of snow on the ground. So it's going to be wow anywhere in Ohio here before we can get out. But that's how we're going to set it up for this year. Um, battery wise, I'm not exactly sure how long this battery is going to hold up. Uh, most of my tournament time is going to be about eight hours. Uh, I can shut it off and not turn it on until I get to my first spot. I can shut it off in the middle of the day if I'm running long run. Uh, but it's set up there in the middle. It seems to be out of the way of everything. Once I get all my rods crammed in there, we'll see how we are storage-wise. That strap will hold it down nice and tight so it's not going to be bouncing and moving around. That's pretty much how we're going to have set up for this year. We'll see how long it lasts and see how it holds up. So we will go from there. Guys, uh, get online, check out BB Waterfowl. Check out what they're doing for waterfowl hunters. Go check out Blue Rock Tackle. Uh, look at what Jesse's got coming out for this year. He came out with a new jig last year, 1099 jig, that turned out to be phenomenal. It's a great seller. It's holding up good and getting great reviews. And if you're in the upstate New York area and you want a good place to stay, uh, look up Mills Cottages and Cabins. Alan up there uh, is a wonderful man. He will treat you right and you will not find a better host anywhere.